Welcome to our new motorhome um, that we're calling La Dolce Vita uh, after our boat. Um, so it's a Swift 674 um, with the fifth seat belt and the drop down bed. Um, and I thought I might show you around. So let's start at the front of the van. Um, both the seats, the driver's seat and the passenger seat, swivel round. Um, and this is a really nice, bright area. Um, I haven't actually got any lights on today. And it is a quite cloudy day, um, but the sun definitely comes through the uh, top light up there. Um, so this converts down into a bed pretty easily. Uh, you basically um, push that table down, um, move a few of the cushions around, and it becomes a quite. I'd say it's a narrow double bed, um, which works fine for Ella because she's only six years old. Um, and then James has this bed up here that pulls down and I'll show you um, in a little bit how that works. Then at the rear of the van uh, there's this large u-shaped space seating area. Uh, that table folds up and goes into that cupboard there and then there are some slats that you pull out to turn that into a large king size bed. Um, you sleep transverse, so across the back of the uh, across the back of the van, and there's loads of space. You'll have to forgive me if at any point I call it a boat. Uh, we used to own a boat, and I keep falling into the habit of um, <laughs> of calling it the boat, but I will get used to it. Uh, where I'm standing right now is a really good sized kitchen area. Um, with a oven, grill, um, microwave. Um, Hi. My hover will dial battery. Okay. So this area in the middle here is the kitchen area, or galley, as I might sometimes call it. Um, so we've got a um, an oven and grill and a three burner hob and a microwave, which you can use when you're on mains power. Um, it's really good space around here and um, so this table pops up to give you a bit of extra prep work area um, and we have actually got another one ready um, to pop up here uh, which is on order and will be arriving at some point um, and then the final room is the bathroom uh, we've got a good amount of space for a shower, toilet, which is obviously on uh, for cartridges, and that's uh, that's pretty much a whistle stop tour. Uh, one thing that's really great about this, um, certainly in comparison to our boat, is the size of this fridge. Um, so there's a freezer compartment in the top, uh, but the size of this fridge it goes pretty much uh, top to bottom. Um, and it gives you a lot of space. Plenty of cupboards um, all around the van at the back. Uh, so underneath this seat is the garage space, which you can get to from outside. And underneath on this side is uh, a lot of space. So you can, um, just under here, you can get to that bit from both the garage and from inside. Um, by lifting up this cushion. Um, we put our bedding in here uh, and the kids bedding goes at the front. Uh, this is the main cupboard which some people have said is um, a bit small but actually we find works quite well um, although having said that we haven't actually been anywhere further than our driveway yet so uh, you never know. Um, and then storage wise at the front of the van uh, you've got four of these cupboards underneath the bed and there is some space under here and uh, under here is the water tank and you've got space under here where there is uh, that's where we keep Ella's sleeping bag and a sheet to go down. So next thing to show you is probably the um, the drop-down bed. 
Okay, so the drop-down bed um, is a really good sized, um, well, it's a large signal, a small double. So it works really well for a single child. I'm not entirely sure you'd have a huge amount of space up there if you were um, adult size. Um, so what we do is uh, we force the cushions up there. And the other thing that's up there, if I can reach it, is the ladder. And then simply push the button and pull it down. There we go. Um, so there are two. There are two different levels that you can have it at, um, which is where I got it stuck. I'm still getting used to it. And um, the other reason that it's not quite you might see me struggle a little bit just to push it up to release this button. Um, and the reason is um, we've left James's sleeping bag up here, which means that there isn't a huge amount of gap when you want to push it. You've basically got to compress the sleeping bag. I don't know how long we'll live like that. We might go back to putting the sleeping bag in one of the cupboards, but I just wanted to try it from a space point of view. Um, so this ladder, uh, you basically unclip each side slot it on here like so and then rotate so that it can't go anywhere and then it's pretty easy to just uh, spin you around um, so yeah pretty good sized double give or take if you're small <laughs> um, this is a uh, you know, a kid's junior size sleeping bag, so it gives you a bit of an idea on size. Uh, the other thing is, I think officially, the sides that you can see here, I think you're supposed to clip those down when you put the bed up and down. But actually at the moment, we've kind of left it there just to see whether or not we can, basically it's the least you can do to convert into a bed. Um, so let me put this back away. So first of all, take the ladder off, set that to one side. Oh, there we go, I had got it up. Um, and then just put the ladder back up there and then these cushions and the kids have got themselves brand new slightly thicker pillows than I originally got than they originally had which means that they're do you need forcing up? Drop that table down. I do need a bit more of a force. And like I said, we're doing this just to see if we can save space. Whether or not in a few months time, we'll just take a view and go, do you know what? We can put these pillows somewhere else. And then, tucking this up out of the way too. There we go. So it's a really nice area to sit in in here. Um, this table slides around, does all sorts of funky stuff. Um, this bit here is an extension that goes in the rear cupboard if you don't want to use it. Um, but because we're converting into the bed, you need it for the bed conversion. And as a family of four with a dog, we kind of want that extra table space. 
So at night, we can convert the front for the kids to sleep, and then Jen and I will sit at the back, have dinner, um, there's a curtain that we can pull across to block out the light, and then we'll convert the bed once we've finished eating. Um, and that was the big draw of this style of van, was that you could actually um, have basically two sides, separate, uh, separate the kids and us at the back. Uh, we rented a motorhome that had a fixed bed at the back last year, just to test it. And whilst it was nice not to have to do a bed conversion, typically we eat once the kids have gone down. So we ended up sitting on a double bed trying to eat, which is a nightmare and would probably result in wine being spilled all over a bed at some point. So um, this is a, quite a sociable um, van area, um, both front and back. When we're going along, um, I'll show you where the kids will sit. Um, so these are the two seat belts. Um, you'll notice that the this piece here, um, that basically comes out and then it folds up underneath here. Um, and then the kids will probably maybe remove one of these whilst we're going along, I'm not sure. And um, the kids will have a good sized table to sit at. Uh, then there's the fifth seat belt here, which is rear facing. And exactly the same is true. This piece um, goes away. And actually, um, you can just see under here, this slides underneath out of the way so that you can take either a guest or a third child. Um, and obviously those two front seats swivel. Um, so this is the um, 2.3 automatic. Um, and the reason that we went um, the reason we went for an automatic was just out of, well, partly out of availability and partly out of ease. Um, so idea is that we're going to travel down through France and all around the UK, hopefully, and in crawling traffic on French motorways, I just don't think you want the additional tiredness of having to change gear um, and you know, kind of sitting in first and riding the clutch the whole time. So. It's all about kind of comfort. The only problem with that is it does create a heavier van. Um, so we actually, when, um, so we bought this new um, from a company called Spinney in North Wales who were absolutely fantastic. Um, can't recommend them enough. Um, they delivered it to us a, f a few weeks ago because um, we're still in lockdown at the moment. Uh, so we couldn't get up there. And um, basically, I've completely forgotten my point. <laughs> uh, so I was talking about the engine. Um, good. Well, I'm sure it was great, and I'll uh, I'll watch it back later and go. Oh, that was a that was a really good point. Well made. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much that's pretty much us. We're really looking forward to getting away. Um, we've spent two nights on it. Um, once in the driveway, once down the side of the house, which is it's kind of more permanent abode. Um, and we're still learning how to use it. I uh, went to have a shower on it yesterday and realised that we'd used all the hot water uh, from doing the washing up. Um, so little things like that, um, we're still we're still kind of learning. Um, when we slept on it in the driveway a couple of weeks ago, it got it was really cold during the really cold weather. Um, so it got down to minus six, I think, um, during the night. Um, we had uh, the electric heating on. Um, we also had a little diddy heater. Um, so from a heating point of view. The onboard heating does quite well at maintaining temperature, but I think it struggles to boost temperature. Um, so what we've got, I'll show you now, is um, just close that. Um, so we've got one of these Diddy Camper heaters, um, and they're absolutely fantastic. They're about 10, 15 pounds. Um, you can obviously only really use them if you're on mains uh, because they do use I think at full blast um, they use about kind of two or three amps um, but they're really good at boosting the temperature up and then the built-in heating system kind of keeps it um, you yeah, know keeps it kind of nicely maintained um, yeah so that's uh, that's our new motorhome Swift 674 automatic um, and we are hopefully going to show you more videos 
as we travel um, and explore and all the fun things that we get up to um, as kind of a young family in a motorhome. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, if you'd like to see more moving forward, make sure you subscribe um, so that you get alerts when I do put videos out. Um, and if you've got any questions, things you'd like to see, either about Swift motorhomes or this particular 674 model, just let me know. Um, see you soon.